2020 has been an incredible year for blockchain and cryptocurrencies. We started the year with a total market cap of 200 billion and ended up at almost 760 billion, almost catching up with the peak of 2017. In this video, I'm going to give you a summary of the most important events that happened in crypto in 2020. I'm going to cover Bitcoin, Ethereum and DeFi. I will talk of crypto prices, the main events and blockchain technology. It is extremely important to know this because it will allow you to anticipate what's coming in 2021 for crypto. And if you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel Eat The Blocks, I teach blockchain development. I've just released a new course on DeFi development. If you are a developer and want to get started in decentralized finance, this course is going to save you a lot of time. I break down all the main concepts used in DeFi. I show how to integrate with the main DeFi protocols and I teach how to build your own DeFi protocol by building four full DeFi projects together. You will find the link down below. Bitcoin started the year at $7,000 and ended at $20,000, a growth of almost 300%. Crossing $20,000 was a huge milestone because it exceeded the top level reached in 2017 at the top of the crypto bubble. There are a couple of reasons that explain this increase. First, in April, there was the Bitcoin halving. A Bitcoin halving is an event predetermined by the Bitcoin software that happened at regular interval where the miners reward gets reduced. This results in less new Bitcoin created, which limit the increase of the total supply, which helps support the price. But the main reason for the price increase of Bitcoin is the new interest from corporate and investment funds. This is very new. In 2017, we had mostly retail investors, but in 2020, we started to see institutional investors arrive in crypto. JP Morgan reported that more companies moved some assets from gold to Bitcoin. PayPal also entered the crypto game by allowing Bitcoin and other crypto to be bought from PayPal account of merchants and individuals. In total, institutional investors held more than $33 billion of dollar worth of Bitcoin at the end of 2020. It might not look like much compared to the $534 billion market cap of Bitcoin, but compared to the daily trading volume of $50 billion, that's very significant. Institutional investors tend to hold the assets for longer and they are not as price sensitive as retail investors, which tend to reduce the volatility and support prices. Not all was perfect though. When news of the pandemic hit the stock market in March, Bitcoin disappointed many by crashing and becoming very correlated to stock for a while. It didn't play its role of counter-cyclical asset in times of turmoil, but later in the year, this correlation with stock broke and Bitcoin became more correlated to gold, which is good. 2020 was also a great year for Ethereum, which increased of almost 450%. In December, it crossed $700, which hasn't happened since since 2017. Why Ethereum went up so much? Several reasons. First, in 2020, the network usage of Ethereum was pushed almost to its max capacity with the rise of DeFi application. We'll talk more about that just after. The second reason for the price increase of Ether was the release of Ethereum 2.0 in December. This upgrade has been delayed many times and it caused many to lose trust in Ethereum. But finally, Ethereum 2.0 was released, the confidence in the network was restored and a massive rally followed. This was only the first phase of Ethereum 2.0 and when the last phase will be rolled out in 2-3 years, it will drastically increase the capacity of the network. Besides Ethereum 2.0, we also had a lot of sidechain projects working on the scaling problem. Projects like Matic and XDAI made a lot of progress in 2020. These layer 2 scaling solutions are very important because Ethereum 2.0 won't be fully deployed in the short term and we need some other scaling solutions to be ready as soon as possible. Besides blockchain core technology, we also have to pay attention to the application layer. For developer tools, 2020 was also an amazing year. We had a lot of new developer tools and a lot of the existing ones became more mature with features designed for advanced users and teams. Solidity, the programming language for smart contracts on Ethereum, received many updates this year, most of them focused on improving security and usability. Truffle, the framework for smart contracts, added integration with many blockchains based on the Ethereum technology. We also had a lot of new tools for managing the whole life cycle of smart contracts, including deployment and monitoring. I'm thinking of tools like Truffle Teams, OpenZeppelin Defender, and Alchemy API. 
2020 was also the year where DeFi took off. DeFi or decentralized finance is a category of blockchain apps mostly built on Ethereum that focuses on reinventing finance but on the blockchain. It started the year with a market cap of $700 million and finished at $14.5 billion or an increase of about 2,100%. For the first half of the year, the market cap of DeFi stayed pretty much stagnant. But on June 16, Compound, a lending protocol, started to distribute token rewards to its users. This was a huge success and quickly attracted a lot of users and assets. The concept of liquidity mining was born. After that, many other DeFi protocols copied the concept and it's really what triggered what came to be called the DeFi summer craze. Investors started to rush to DeFi trying to capitalize on the juicy retail Returns they could get from DeFi. At the peak of the DeFi summer craze, the trading volume of decentralized exchanges exploded, like Uniswap, whose trading volume became higher than Coinbase. Some investors became really active and started to rotate their funds quickly between DeFi protocols to chase the highest returns. Some investors made insane returns up to several hundred of percent. That's what we called yield farming. Eventually, the high transaction fees and the repeated hack spooked some investors and ended the DeFi summer craze. DeFi is not dead though, it has just slowed down to a more healthy level of activity and we will probably see another DeFi wave next year. However, if we want to have a successful year for DeFi in 2021, we will have to do better on security. In 2020, with the rise of DeFi also came the rise of DeFi hacks. On the whole year, there was more than 100 million of dollars stolen in hacks. Some of these hacks were on a lesser known project like BZX, Harvest Finance, but we also had hacks on high profile projects like Uniswap or Maker. A lot of these hacks involve flash loans. Flash loans are a new concept invented in DeFi that allow anybody to borrow a very large sum of money without any collateral. This was originally created for legitimate purpose like arbitrage, but as we saw in 2020, it can also be used in very harmful ways. So we are going to have to tighten up security in 2021 and also start to offer some insurance solutions. In 2020, another very important development of crypto was stablecoins. Stablecoins are crypto assets that always keep the same value. Most of them are implemented as ERC20 tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. We started the year at about $5 billion of stablecoins in circulation and we reached $28 billion at the end of the year. That's a phenomenal growth rate of 5,600%. This figure is to be compared with $31 billion of PayPal dollar in existence. In 2020, the bigger use of stablecoins was in DeFi, but they also have a big potential to be used for online payments. The rise of stablecoins is very scary for governments and this is the main reason why regulators are becoming more concerned about the crypto industry. What about other blockchains? Many blockchains try to compete with Ethereum with lower transaction fees. EOS and Tron were pretty quiet in 2020. Binance launched the Binance Smart Chain and they did manage to attract some DeFi projects. Polkadot is another interesting project. It's a blockchain that wants to connect all the blockchains together. They are still very nascent, but we already saw a couple of DeFi projects being launched on Polkadot. So the big question is, does Ethereum have to worry about all of these competitors? Yes and no. Short term, they can probably steal some market share from Ethereum. However, we see very little innovation on these other blockchains at the protocol level or at the application level. For example, most of the DeFi app on Binance Smart Chain are just copy-paste of Ethereum DeFi protocol. And a lot of them are outright scams. At the protocol level, all of these blockchains only achieve more transactions per second compared to Ethereum by sacrificing decentralization. Ethereum 2.0 is the only blockchain project that will be both scalable and decentralized. So the big question is what's going to happen in blockchain in 2021? Well, now that you know the main events of 2020, you can maybe anticipate and make some predictions. So I want you to tell me in the comments down below what you think will happen in crypto in 2021. As of me, for my next video, I will tell you what are my predictions for blockchain in 2021. I'll see you there.